11 startling pitbull statistics and facts in 2022 with FAQ and common myths. The statistics in this article were obtained from outside sources, and they do not necessarily reflect the views of this website. The Pit Bull Terrier is one of the most contentious canines. Some individuals passionately defend these dogs, saying they are sweet but misunderstood beings who are victims of humanity rather than a danger to it. Some people argue that these dogs are too hazardous to own because they can be used as fatal weapons while being led by their owners. They claim data that demonstrates pit bulls are responsible for the majority of deadly dog attacks and that each of these dogs is nothing more than a ticking time bomb. We made the decision to dig further into the data and statistics on these pets in light of these opposing assertions. Do they actually pose a threat to the public's health, making specific legislation to ban their ownership necessary? Or are people's worries about these pets really unfounded? The reality is somewhere in the middle, as it so frequently is. Let's look at some current pit bull facts and figures. The 11 pit bull statistics and facts. 1. The American Kennel Club, AKC, asserts that the pit bull is not a legitimate breed. 2. According to statistics gathered by the ASBCA, pit bulls are the most typical breed of dog discovered in animal shelters. 3. There are no reliable or convincing statistics demonstrating the prevalence of pit bulls or their number in the U.S. 4. The way that breeds are identified in shelters varies depending on where you are and who is labeling the animals. 5. Dogs classified as pit bulls stay in shelters three times longer than dogs classified as other breeds. 6. According to one study, pit bulls and rottweilers were responsible for 67% of all dog bite-related fatalities in the U.S. 7. In the same study, it was discovered that over 42 breeds were responsible for at least one fatality brought on by dog bites. 8. Although the frequency of dog attacks has stayed fairly stable over time, the breeds that are most frequently involved have varied. 9. Pit bulls pass temperament tests 87.4% of the time, according to data from the American Temperament Test Society, ATTS. 10. Evidence suggests that pit bulls are more aggressive toward other dogs. 11. Of all breeds, the pit bull has the eighth strongest bite force. Top Pit Bull Statistics and Facts 1. The American Kennel Club, AKC, claims that the Pit Bull is not a legitimate breed. It's quite challenging to gain a precise definition of what a Pit Bull is. Several breeds, notably American Staffordshire Terriers, American Bullies, and Staffordshire Bull Terriers, are frequently included under the term Pit Bull. The United Kennel Club and American Dog Breeders Association both recognize the American Pit Bull Terrier breed, but not the American Kennel Club, AKC, which is generally regarded as the definitive authority on dog breeds in America. In general, the name Pit Bull is used to describe any medium-sized dog with a stocky build and a boxy skull. As a result, it is extremely challenging, if not impossible, to obtain precise information that specifically applies to pit bulls. 2. According to statistics gathered by the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, ASPCA, pit bulls are the most typical breed of dog discovered in animal shelters. The ASPCA gathered information from more than 30 animal shelters around the U.S. in 2014. With almost 50,000 canines in such shelters, pit bulls were by far the breed that was most prevalent. For comparison, chihuahuas came in second with little over 34,000 people living in shelters. Sadly, only about 11,000 of those pit bulls were eventually adopted, while more than 25,000 had to be put to death. This information suggests that there are problems with pit bull population control and a low desire for their company. However, due to frequent misidentification, this information, like the majority of the other data on this list, may be false. Image courtesy of Pixabay and Dozen 777. 3. There are no reliable or convincing statistics demonstrating the popularity of pit bulls or their present population in the United States. You may find numerous statistics online indicating that between 6 and 20% of all canines in the U.S. are of the pit bull breed. These statistics are, at best, 
based on informed approximations. Pit bulls are the third most popular breed of dog adopted from animal shelters, according to the ASPCA survey that was previously mentioned. Because of this, a lot of sites immediately think that pit bulls are the third most common breed in the U.S. But only 19% of all canines were acquired from shelters, according to HSUS data. The remainder were obtained from friends and acquaintances, purchased from breeders, or taken in as strays. Given this, it is highly improbable that pit bulls are as popular as many of the frequently given statistics would suggest. It is, however, impossible to say for sure. For the way that breeds are identified in shelters varies depending on where you are and who is labeling the animals. A recent study by Arizona State University's Canine Science Collaboratory discovered that people in different parts of the country have varied probabilities of classifying the same dog as a pit bull, which serves to further underline the point that pit bull identification is, at best, a risky enterprise. When contrasting the perspectives of American and British shelter employees, the disparity is much more pronounced. When shown 20 various images of dogs, while British shelter employees only classified 5% of the same dogs as pit bulls, American shelter workers categorized 35% of them as such. Breed-specific legislation, BSL, is one of the main causes of misidentification in the region that the shelter serves. In fact, 42% of the shelter employees surveyed admitted that they would purposefully misidentify a dog that resembled a pit bull if they believed it would increase the dog's chances of surviving. Five dot pit bull designated dogs stay in shelters for three times longer than other breeds designated dogs. The name given to a dog by animal shelter admission staff has a significant impact on the canine's ultimate fate. As we've seen, whether they're used voluntarily or not, they're not very good at correctly recognizing dogs. One study found that a dog's appearance is frequently the deciding factor in whether or not it gets adopted. The dog's prospects of being adopted, however, are significantly reduced when the designation pit bull is attached. Dogs that resemble pit bulls but aren't classified as such spend an average of 12 days in shelters. The same dog will now, however, spend an average of 42 days in the shelter after receiving the pit bull label. 6. One study found that pit bulls and rottweilers accounted for 67% of all dog bite-related fatalities in the United States. According to one study, pit bulls and rottweilers were responsible for 67% of all dog bite-related fatalities in the U.S. Here are some pit bull bite statistics in case you're interested. Data from 1981 to 1992 were examined by researchers from the American Veterinary Medical Association, AVMA, the Humane Society of the United States, HSUS, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. The statistics revealed that the majority of fatalities involving dogs were caused by pit bull type dogs and rottweilers. The data, however, was not based on DNA testing but rather on eyewitness identification of the attacking canines. That seems to indicate that pit bulls are probably to blame for attacks committed by other breeds. Nevertheless, the figures are sizable enough to suggest that pit bulls are likely to be overrepresented on lists of dog-related fatalities, even when allowing for misidentification. 7. Over 42 breeds were found to have caused at least one dog bite-related fatality in that same study. There were several breeds on the list, but pit bulls and rottweilers were the ones that were most frequently associated with deadly attacks. That demonstrates unequivocally that any dog might be harmful. Akitas, Japanese hunting dogs, and Rhodesian Ridgebacks are just a few of the breeds that made the list, all of which are considerably less popular than pit bulls. This may imply that the fact that pit bull type canines are a considerably more popular breed is at least partially to blame for the large numbers that are connected to them. 8. While the number of dog attacks has remained constant for quite some time, the breeds responsible for them have changed. People who assert that pit bulls are inherently dangerous cite figures showing that the dogs are primarily to blame for deadly assaults, such as the one above. That hasn't always been the case, though, and the breed that has historically been responsible for the most lethal assaults has evolved. 
For instance, in the 1970s, German shepherds were the breed most frequently involved for fatal maulings, but Great Danes assumed the role in the first few years of the next decade. It appears that the popularity of the dog is more likely to cause a fatal attack than anything else, and the pit bull's rising popularity may be the reason for its prominent position in attack statistics. 9. According to data from the American Temperament Test Society, ATTS, pit bulls pass temperament tests 87.4% of the time. A national nonprofit organization called the ATTS conducts tests on dogs to ascertain their temperament. The animal must not exhibit panic, intense avoidance without recovery, or unprovoked hostility in order to pass the test. Their data shows that 87.4% of the time, pit bulls pass the test. To put it in perspective, the test is only passed by golden retrievers 85.6% of the time, a breed that is typically regarded as friendly and harmless. Now, this information does not imply that any certain animal will be reliable. However, it strongly suggests that spontaneous violence is not a problem that pit bulls are predisposed to. 10. It has been established that pit bulls are more aggressive toward other dogs. Clearly, pit bulls are not the threat that many people believe them to be, as demonstrated by the statistics from the ATTS that was previously cited. The School for Veterinary Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania revealed in a 2008 study that pit bull-type dogs displayed substantially lower hostility to humans, but increased aggression to dogs. This hostility was particularly obvious toward dogs that the pit bull was unfamiliar with. It didn't apply to the weird canine's owners, though. In this regard, they weren't the most aggressive breed. Dachshunds and Chihuahuas both held that title. 11. The eighth strongest biting force among all breeds belongs to the pit bull. Misinformation abounds regarding the potency of pit bull's bites, the majority of which asserts that these dogs have the strongest bites of any breed. In reality, only two credible studies have looked at the strength of a dog's bite, and they found that pit bulls have the eighth strongest bite of any breed at 235 PSI. That's nearly twice as powerful as a human's biting force, so even while it might be harmful, it's hardly a vice-like hold. The Kangal, a dog that resembles a Mastiff and with a biting force of 743 PSI, is the breed with the strongest bite. Kangals, on the other hand, don't have a reputation for being very lethal, suggesting that the pit bull's murky reputation is due to something else. Why do pit bulls have such a contradictory image? Without a doubt, many people have unfavorable perceptions of pit bulls. There is some truth to this bad reputation, but some of it is just a result of myths and inaccurate information about the breed. The first dogs of the pit bull breed were created in the UK around the start of the 19th century. They were employed in blood sports like as rat baiting, bull baiting, and dog fighting. By the middle of that century, these sports had crossed the pond and were well liked in the US. In 1911, the United Kingdom outlawed all dog-related blood sports, but dogs were still raised for companionship. The awful practices haven't been completely eradicated, as dog fighting was only made a crime in all 50 states in 2008. Due to this, many individuals now relate the dogs to aggression. They hold that these canines' hostility is intrinsic and something they can't switch off. However, there isn't much evidence to back up that claim. These canines do have a problem with the kind of owners they tend to draw. Since pit bulls are frequently associated with strength and masculinity, they are frequently kept by people who want to project those qualities, which regrettably includes gang members and other undesirable characters. The likelihood that these owners won't properly socialize, train, or restrain their dogs increases the likelihood that they'll be involved in a major attack. You may use this image without restriction, however we do ask that you give Hepper.com credit by including a link. Breed Specific Laws and Pit Bulls Due to their unfavorable reputation, breed specific legislation frequently targets pit bulls, BSL. These are legislative efforts to curtail or completely outlaw the ownership of dangerous dogs. Are there not, however, positive pit bull statistics? 
Pit Bull supporters claim that BSL is discriminatory because it unfairly demonizes a breed and penalizes responsible dog owners. BSL supporters retort that it is a reasonable response to a serious public health problem. The fact that breed is a poor indicator of hostility is one issue with this. Any breed of dog can be aggressive, and factors other than breed, including chaining a dog up, can influence the animal's propensity to attack. The fact that multiple studies have indicated that BSL is ineffective, however, is a much bigger problem. In addition to failing to reduce the frequency of major dog bites, it also raises expenditures for the community, primarily as a result of the need to retrain animal control employees, legal actions involving breed misidentification, and an increase in the number of animals in shelters. However, this does not imply that nothing can be done. Leash regulations and other existing animal control rules should be upheld, and increased training and certification requirements for dog owners are appropriate places to start. Top 4 Myths About Pit Bulls More than any other breed, pit bulls are the subject of several misconceptions. While some of them give the dogs unjustified credit, others want to unfairly malign them. Myth 1, Pit Bull's Jaws Clamp Shot this urban legend strongly implies that if your pit bull bites someone, you won't be able to stop them from attacking again. Its purpose is to frighten people about the seriousness of a pit bull assault. In terms of anatomy, a pit bull's jaws function similarly to those of other dogs, and there are other dogs with stronger bites. They are less likely than other breeds to remain locked onto a bite victim and neither do their jaws lock. 2. Myth Pit bulls do not experience pain during combat. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth. They experience the same level of suffering that any other dog would. Fighting pit bulls, on the other hand, were developed to not be violent toward their owners, even during or right after a bout. This lack of aggression might be a factor in the perception that they weren't hurt during the actual fight. 3. Myth Historically, pit bulls were regarded as nanny dogs. This rumor appears to have its origins in a single assertion made in 1971 by Lillian Rant, the president of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier Club of America. But Rant's statement that many Staffordshire Bull Terrier owners called their canines nursemaid dogs was obviously made in the present tense and not as a reference to years of earlier history. No matter how much you may trust them, you should never leave a dog of any breed alone with a youngster. However, given that they are properly socialized and trained, pit bulls are frequently extremely tolerant of young children. 4. Myth, Pit Bulls Never Provoke an Assault This urban legend is frequently offered as evidence that dogs are fundamentally unreliable and unpredictable. However, it is abundantly obvious from the ATTS's temperament research that pit bulls aren't prone to unprovoked aggressiveness. The majority of people also have little knowledge of canine behavior, which makes it difficult for them to understand what provokes a dog attack. In the vast majority of instances where a pit bull attacks a human, the victim provoked the animal, albeit generally unintentionally. While we don't advocate tolerating pit bulls who have displayed hostility against people, more education and awareness are required to help people learn how to interact with dogs of all breeds safely. Conclusion It's uncommon to come across a pit bull-related viewpoint that falls somewhere in between the two extremes. Both sides see them as innocent, misunderstood animals who are more likely to be the victims of violence than the perpetrators, while one side sees them as vicious killers. Worse yet, it appears that these beliefs are hardening more as defenders of each side refuse to consider any material that would challenge their preconceived ideas. The truth is that these creatures are simply canines, albeit ones with a cruel social reputation. They are neither angels nor devils. Can they make devoted family pets? Absolutely. In the event of abuse, neglect, or inadequate training, are they capable of enormous violence? A breed like any other, yes. Pit bull controversy is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Hopefully, though, we can now start to evaluate these dogs on their own merits, as opposed to the myriad sensationalist assertions that both sides' fans constantly make about.